Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The base of our meditation this morning comes to us from the Old Testament reading, Daniel chapter 12, the first three verses. We listen again to the first verse. In that time, Michael the great prince will stand. He will stand upon the sons of your people, and there will be a time of distress, which has not happened since the beginning of the nation until that time. And in that time, your people will be saved. All those who are found having been written in the book. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, when things go south, what exactly does that expression mean? Well, I looked it up. It simply means the direction south, oftentimes people refer to it as down, north being up, that when things go south, things go down, things, bad things happen. It kind of goes along with when it rains, it pours. I'm sure you can think of a time in your life when it rains, it pours, and when things really went south. I remember a weekend. It was a bad weekend. It was a weekend I got that phone call on Saturday morning. Apparently the next door pastor, his son had gotten caught underneath a garage door. And they were sending him to the hospital. And so I quickly had to run and go give a pastoral call to a fellow brother of mine. Now my wife was working in town, and I had my two kids who were young at that time, young at that time, with me. So I thought I'd just take them to her, which she could keep at her work. So I put them in the van I was driving, and when I got in the van, I realized I left something inside. So I went back into the house and came back out, and I had locked my kids in the van. They were, of course they were young. They were screaming and hollering. So I had to call my wife. Apparently I had to go across the street to the church because they were decorating for Christmas that, that Saturday. And I went to get a phone call to phone my wife because I left my cell phone in the house on top of all this. Actually I left it in the car, I'm sorry. I left it in the van. So after I got that all arranged, went to the hospital and it did not look good for the pastor's son, who is still living to this day, by the way. But it was that next morning, I remember driving to my second parish I was serving. And I was about 10 miles from the house when all of a sudden a deer hopped out in front of me and wham! When it rains, it pours. Things go south. $500 later, deductible, yes, it fixed. And of course, it doesn't fail, but if just a little bit later, it snowed, which it rarely does there. Of course, the wind always blows there, and there were drifts four to five feet tall that I had to shovel snow out of to get out. When it rains, it pours, isn't it? When things go south. It's amazing when you think about it. But God gives us always a way out. Daniel, the prophet, when things go south. Notice what he says this morning. He says there's going to be a time when you're going to have a time of distress. Now think about this. When exactly is Daniel prophesying and telling this? It is the time that his people are not in Israel, but they're in Babylon. They're not their own. They belong as slaves to a foreign nation. How can things get any worse than this? But Daniel reminds them that yes, it can get worse. When things go south for the people of Israel in Daniel's time, it can get worse. What about for us? You can think about that time when things went bad for you. But isn't it funny, but yet not really that funny, that the times that went bad for you, how many of those times you actually are the ones that are responsible for that bad things happening to you, one way or another? 
It just reminds us of how sinful, how evil, and how corrupt we truly, really are. We can complain all we want about how bad things are, but we need to be honest with ourselves and see our sin and plead for mercy to our God because what do we really deserve is much worse than what we really have. It's interesting to note that Daniel says in the text this morning, there will be a time of distress. And that Hebrew word for distress is quite interesting. It's zara is the Hebrew word. And this is also the word for a rival wife. Think about it. You remember Rachel and Leah? who were rivals, who fought against each other. Yeah, they were family, but family also oftentimes fights harder with each other than enemies do. Rival wives. What Daniel is really saying here is, is your trouble is not going to be out there at a distance. As if we're watching TV and there's a tragedy here or there. No, what he's saying is the tragedy is going to be in your living room. It's going to be in your life. It's going to be personable. Yes, times are bad and they're going to get worse. Why? Because we're poor, sinful beings who really deserve even much worse. Because what we truly deserve is eternal death and damnation. When things go south for us, how do we cope with that? Do we think to ourselves, well, it could be worse? What hope is that? Is there any hope in knowing that it could be worse? I oftentimes lean that way many times. When the temperature is 100 degrees outside, I always say to somebody who is suffering, well, it could be 110 degrees. And the next day, what do you know? It's 110 degrees. Or it goes the next other way, or too, when it comes to cold temperatures, or when it comes to life in general. It could be worse. What hope is that? It is no hope. Because it can be worse, and it does get worse. But when things go bad for Jesus, what happens to him? Jesus is teaching he has disciples who are listening intently on what he says. And yet he has enemies, religious leaders of this day, who are listening intently on what he says, but have a different motive. Instead, they want to use what Jesus says to turn it against him, to destroy him, to put him to death. Yes, things go bad for Jesus many times in his ministry. And he did not say things are going to get worse because he knew they were going to get worse for him. He knew exactly what was going to take place. Yet he was sinless. He took our sins upon himself, and things did get worse. Things did go south for him, because they put him upon trial. He was betrayed by his own follower. Put upon trial. Condemned. And then put to death. Can things get worse? He was buried. But things get a whole lot better. For Jesus did not stay in that grave. But on the third day, he rose again to give life to all those who trust and believe in him. Yeah, things may get worse, and they will get worse, for us who trust in Jesus, we have a resurrection to look forward to. Your names, who have bapti you who have been baptized in Christ's death and resurrection, your names have been written in the book of life. And your names are the ones that God sees as his people. And it is you yourself who will rise up from the dust of death and have everlasting life. And it's nothing that we have done or nothing that we have said. And the hope is not that things are going to get better, but they're going to get great. For life that we have with Jesus is a life that we have by our gracious God who grants us his forgiveness and his life. 
Now I remember once Henry Kissinger once said, said, I cannot have a crisis this week. My schedule is too full. Sometimes we feel that, do we not? And we will have crisis even when our schedule is full. But the one thing that is certain, regardless whether we live today or die today and tomorrow, we have life in Jesus. Because we have life today in Jesus. For he took his, our sins upon himself and suffered for us. The suffering we deserve, the death we deserve, he died. And the resurrection that he gives, we experience. It is in Jesus that we celebrate and that we have life.